Hey, welcome to the Step It Up Thursday group coaching call, also formerly known as the Thursday group training. Today, I'm getting started a little bit late, 11 o'clock Texas time, but what I have to talk about today is really important, and I'm looking forward to the recording, getting up into your archives, because it's a really, really important topic. Hiring right the first time, and a lot of times people join the Step It Up group. They join it for the group coaching. They grow it because they're just looking for resources and the feeling of overwhelm, the feeling like you're drowning. It's just part of the growing pains of of practice ownership, sure, but it shouldn't be your new normal. It shouldn't be just how things go. You should be able to enjoy your business, enjoy your life, And when that just seems to be, uh, I know in the real estate business, they call it a a, a crocodile. It's just, it seems like every day you're feeding it, you're feeding it, you're feeding it. This business always takes, it always takes. And the moments of giving, they're there, but you just wish, you just wish there was someone who could help you take the load off. And I talk about the three eyes of the entrepreneur. Now, I didn't make that up, so I'll try to find the resource and put it here in the notes. But it talks about is as a as a business owner, you are the entrepreneur, right? You have the vision, you have the uh, audacity to even do this thing in the first place. You've got to think about the future, forecast the the business plan, change the business plan, pivot. But you're also the manager, right? You have to make sure the bills get paid and the rent gets paid, and uh, everybody you know has the equipment they need. Even solo practitioners, if it's just you, there's a part of your practice that's just management. And then you're the technician. You are the deliverer of services, right? You have your own client load and you get joy from helping people and you don't want to stop that unless you burn out. And so as always with these trainings, my number one goal is to keep you in business, right? You're no good to you or your community or your family or your dream if you burn out because of overwhelm and frustration. So systems that keep you HIPAA compliant, one of those things is hiring right using a marketing calendar using standard operating procedures. So when you leave this training today, even if I don't have anybody jump on the call, which is absolutely fine, you can watch it later. Um, And if you're typing in the comments, just know I don't always see those until this is over. So if you have typed the question in the comments, I will answer it once I get offline. And you can always tag me in this group and I will answer your questions. So what I want you to leave this training with is a plan for how to address the front end of your hiring, the back end of your hiring, and a plan before our training next week, because the training next week is going to be about standard operating procedures, a plan for what you want to hire out. If you got my emails, I did uh, an email yesterday, you know, what are the the number one jobs that counselors hire out? And trick question, nothing, because we try to do it all ourselves. And then today I had an email with a little short two-minute video of a walk through my progressive discipline plan. So I'm already trying to give you tools, and I hope you're going through your start here menu item in your Kate Walker training profile that you get with the Step It Up group. All right, so The front end, uh, for me, this is what I consider the front end, would have to start with your interview questions. But I I was thinking about this because I talked about it in the Thursday 30 group this morning as well. It actually starts with your job posting. So I'm going to back up a little bit and ask you if you know how to write a job description. So here's the person we're looking for. Are you using all of those kind of nebulous uh, words that folks use? I need a self-starter, someone who can who knows the value of a dollar, who's a people person. Or are you saying specific things like responsible for posting five times each week across a variety of platforms, must know Google Docs, must understand how to uh, analyze uh insights from social media postings, understand conversion rates, and help me make sure that my marketing delivers a return on my investment, right? So if you're not able to craft a job description in a way that communicates exactly what you need, 
then of course you're going to hire people who are confused, right? Or if you hire someone because they say, well, you know, I'm a single mom, I've got kids, and you start to have that counter transference or you over identify with their situation, same thing, right? Now you're in a spot where you're hiring the wrong people for the wrong reasons. And worst of all, you're setting them up for failure. So a lot of what you're going to hear from me this month in this training, the training next week is about how you're responsible for probably 80% of your performance, the performance that you get from the people you hire. So job description, crafting one that is very, very specific about what exactly you need. And you may say, well, Kate, I don't know what I need. Do the research, right? You have to learn the job before you can hire out the job. Uh, the only exception for me is cleaning my house, right? I don't have to learn. You just, you know, clean it and, right? No, but in your business, I, I do this a lot when I think about editing, right? If I send something out for editing, but I've never edited a paper before, well, how will I know if it's even edited correctly? Right. If I get comments back, that's like, oh, Kate, you got a ton of misspellings here. This is not looking right. Right. So understand, I, I won't know what to look for if I've never done it myself. Now, I know there are limits like taxes. Right. You don't know what you don't know. And I even have a YouTube video on that. So go check that out. But in cases where you, this is your business, this is your area that you're managing, you're the technician, you're the entrepreneur then take some time and do some research. Take an online course, right? If it's marketing, and I choose that because that's generally what I hear the most people hiring out, that and new therapists. So I'm, I'm starting with the marketing piece first. Take an online course in marketing. Take one from 2022. Also, don't take one from 2019. Take one that's recent and that can help you with the new things. Okay, the second thing in the front, sorry, third thing, I guess, in the orientation. So we had the job description, interview questions, orientation. Have an orientation to your business. Everything from how to unlock the front door, what to do if the door won't open, what to do if uh, someone in the waiting room is having heart palpitations or a heart attack or needs CPR, uh, what to do at the end of the day if uh, there's a client that won't leave. You have to have procedures and not just a policy and procedures manual, because that's on here, but an orientation that walks people through the policy and procedures, helps them understand overtly what you expect and have a signature page at the end of that policy and procedures manual that indicates that they read it right? <clears throat> For documentation purposes. And we'll get to that. Although I think you are already know why, but we'll get to that again in a second. Now, what's more powerful than an orientation and a policy and procedures manual, right? Because they can sit in the orientation and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do I sign? Here we go. Thank you. Bye. I'm going to go start earning money from you. You must create a culture of excellence. I think you need to create a culture of excellence, loyalty, integrity, and energy, but at least strive to create a culture of excellence. Think of it as positive peer pressure, right? And one of the uh, industries that I love that creates some really fun videos, and if you got my email yesterday, I included one. They knock, they, they salons just knock, knock it out of the park, right? They, they create a culture they've got music. Each salon chair is an independent contractor. They interview them and they say things like, you know, the reason I came to such and such salon is because this is what I want for my career. And they really provide a supportive environment. I knew what I was getting and I'm so happy to be here, right? Imagine if you could have a video like that, that shows a prospective employee, the culture of your practice, right? If you guys like to do experiential learning, throw in some videos of that. If you guys celebrate baby showers and birthdays, show that. If you have, a, you know, if you expect a warm, friendly face, you know, hire a fake client and show them shaking hands. And, you know, this is how we do that, right? So establishing the client culture, that's way, I'm sorry, not client culture, your office, your practice culture, that even becomes, comes before the job description, right? Because 
you're creating this, you want to, if you're trying to create something that doesn't exist, right? Like I'm going to hire the right person and it's really going to turn this place around. Wrong. I saw a meme on Facebook that said, the thing that will destroy a good worker the most is you putting up with the actions of everybody else, right? Because a good worker is going to look and say, oh, she says this, but she means that. Or, oh, he wants me to meet these expectations, but he's keeping less over there. Uh, Lester, who hasn't uh, seen a client in two weeks and, and nobody ever says anything, right? So your culture starts with you and then the people in your office, right? It spreads. And we know that if you're a systemic thinker like I am, you absolutely know that. So after established culture, what are we up to? One, two, three, four, number five, SOPs, standard operating procedures. And you may be saying, well, Kate, I've got that too. Okay. But I know mine change like weekly, especially the social media ones. I just took a training. In fact, I'm going to share it with you. With uh, uh, she's our our next expert uh, this month, and uh, she talked to me about Nicolette Wax. She's with HomeCookedRoots.com. I was blanking on her name. She's an SEO guru. She's amazing with SEO, and listening to her talk about search engine optimization (SEO) made me realize, oh crap, I've got to go in and write new SOPs for my amazing assistant, Jessica, right? So Jessica's doing exactly what I told her to do. But then I take a training and I'm like, oh, I've got to rewrite this. So if I got mad at Jessica because, oh, the SEO's all messed up, we're not ranking as high as I want to rank, I'd have to come back here, all eyes on me, and ask myself, wait a second, did I explain it based on this new information? Right. A lot of us, I think, as bosses, we want to be bossy. Go take a training and I better see the results. OK, well, how would I know that the results are better when I don't know what my return on investment and my numbers? I don't even know what would change. Is it an insight number on a graph that I'm looking for? Is it engagement? Is it sales? Right. So you must understand the system before you can write the SOP in order to make your new hiree successful. So uh, what we're talking about this week in our blog post, actually next week, is how standard operating procedures, in particular, the editorial calendar and the content calendar, they're not just amazing ways to, to stay organized, because we talk about that all the time with marketing, right? It's also an amazing thing to hire right and to hire someone who you know will be your voice. So the editorial calendar as an onboarding procedure to hire and make sure that you're setting this person up for success. So we talk about that in the blog next week. I'm talking about it now. So your SOPs should be in your onboarding, right? We're going to spend a week going over SOPs. I'm going to watch you go through the SOPs. Maybe we're going to find a mistake and we need to rewrite this section to make sure that it's actually what we want. And imagine if your new person that you hired looked at you and said, um, I can do all of this, but there's no way to know if it's actually working, right? That would be a smart person who you just hired because they're like, look, I don't want to be set up for failure if you don't get more clients. What does better look like? But you're going to be thinking about that. The policy and procedures manual, I don't really want to say a whole lot about. You can literally Google that. I think I put one in your step it up uh, in your profile in the start here module. Stop the recording. Go look. I'm pretty sure it's there. It's under templates and forms. If you look at policy and procedures manual, uh, it's just a Word doc and you can customize it for your practice. Pop it in here in the thread. If you don't see it, I will absolutely put it in there. So your policy and procedures, I like to think of as sort of the babysitter list for when you go out to dinner and you're leaving the babysitter with your kids. You try to cover everything, but there's no way you can cover everything. So your policy and procedures manual has to be this very fluid 
flexible document, right? If you want to put it in a notepad and you just take out pages and add pages, I'm sorry, not a notepad. What are those things called? Three ring binders, right? Remember those? Or if you want to share a, a Word doc uh, in a Google Drive or in a Dropbox file, it must always grow as you get new information. Now, the progressive discipline plan, we're getting sort of toward the back end. Remember the front end of hiring? That's your uh, job description, interview questions, orientation, the established culture, your standard operating procedures or SOPs, your policy and procedures manual. Now the progressive discipline plan is how you start to document things like the verbal write-up, the written write-up. And it starts with that signature page on your policy and procedures manual. Right, whether you're doing a virtual file or you got a big old three drawer file cabinet over there with everybody's stuff in it, that signature page on the policy and procedure sets the foundation of, hey, you know as much as I do now. If you get in a, in a bind, ask me, ask questions. But if you mess up, we are now going to assume you understand everything. And here's what comes next. So check my check the email from Kate Walker Training today in your inbox. It should already be there unless it's in the giant vacuum bag of your spam catcher, which Kate Walker Training emails tend to end up there a lot. Check in there for the two-minute video where I walk you through a progressive discipline plan. And you can literally Google those as well. In fact, in the policy and procedures manual template, in your start here module, in your Kate Walker training, step it up profile, there is that that actually includes the uh, progressive discipline page or, or plan and the signature page. All right, how are we doing on time? All right, we're getting there. Firing. Let's talk about firing because when I deliver the 40 hour training to become a supervisor, one of the things that I really try to help prospective and new supervisors understand is there is now a higher hierarchy, okay? You're here, the supervisee is here. Now that's not mean, it just is what it is because the supervisor is the gatekeeper. They can literally keep this person from getting licensed because they have two things. They have power and they have authority, right? That's you as a boss. And so being able to wield that power and authority, I find that counselors, we get in our own heads a lot, right? <clears throat> because we're fair, we're very altruistic, we're very collaborative, right? We may sit here, we're like, oh gosh, you know, I know I should write them up, but I don't think I told them that in the orientation. Shoot, okay, well, you know what? Forget about it. Or, oh gosh, you know what? They've been doing it for three months. It's too late to address it now. I'm just, I know, I'll just hire, I'll just, I'll do it myself. Oh my gosh. So a lot of us are conflict avoiders and we'd rather host a, a three-hour training and pay everybody in the company to come to the three-hour training because one person is not doing their job. If it says in the job description, must see 10 clients a week, in the orientation, if you help them understand all the support they're going to get, in your standard operating procedures and your culture video, you explain how to do a 10-minute consultation, what attraction marketing is, how to go out in the community and do public speaking, the networking opportunities that they're going to have. And they sign the piece of paper that says, yeah, I get it. And I've asked every question that I'm going to ask. And you haven't given a written or verbal a written or fired someone for this, then you have just changed your practice culture. You are going to watch that culture, the good people say, well, I have great support here, but I'm working harder than Joe over here. And that's not fair. I, you know what, I can go do this on my own. And as a practice owner, if you're counting on that income, right, but you're not, or you're gonna set up the three hour training because Joe and maybe Sue, you got two people out of 10 who are dragging their feet. That means, and I know this is you because y'all are all, are all overachievers. You've all gone to meetings that were because one person wasn't doing their job and the people that were doing their job had to go to the meeting. What did that do for morale? What did that do for your morale? 
welcome to a practice culture you just created by accident, right? So firing is on the back end. Uh, just know that it's inevitable. It's If you do the things that I talk about on the front end, then it's not going to be a surprise to you or the person that you're firing. And it will be something that will allow you both to grow and find other opportunities. Now, if you're watching this on replay, I'm going to talk about the webinar coming, in, coming up August 31st. It's free. It's all about hiring. We'll dive into this even more. Next week, we'll talk more about SOPs and what those look like and how they help hiring uh, and how they help just your business run smoothly. Uh, Badass Basics is starting September 1st and the Step It Up members, y'all get a super deep discount on that. You get it, you get a discount that nobody else gets. So check it out, click the coupon, but click the coupon in the start here module. That's the one that's going to show the deep discount. So this has been all about hiring. And I told you a little bit about hiring, but I'm going to tell you more the rest of the month. If you have questions, tag me in the Facebook group, shoot me an email or put it in the thread here. I hope you guys have a great day.